Hey, welcome back. This lecture will focus on building a website in a CMS or a content management system. You'll use the information while you learn to use the CMS called WordPress. Also while you're building your web portfolio and while you do a discussion post this week in module seven. Let's get started. So this lecture has four parts. I'm going to begin by defining what I mean by web design. Second, I'll talk about the use of content management systems or CMSs. And third, I'll explore the role of web design and CMSs specifically in technical communication. So let's start with defining web design. So what is it? In a nutshell, it means designing what users see on the screen and the usability of a website separate from its content. The difficulty with defining web design is that there are several related activities or job roles that overlap with web design. In fact, quote unquote, web design is a bit of an archaic term. It dates back to the days when a single person handled all aspects of creating a website. Today, it's more likely that the different tasks involved in creating a website are done by people in specific roles. In a 2018 article on 99designs, Matt Ellis did a terrific job of defining and differentiating these different tasks or roles. I've summarized some of his ideas in this table. Ellis wrote about how someone in each role would think about fixing a website with slow page loading times. A web designer might have a more specific role. With expertise in graphic design, the designer might want to solve the issue by doing something like compressing image files to make them load faster. On the other hand, a front-end web developer with coding expertise might suggest using CSS sprites where a single file holds multiple images to save bandwidth. As another example, a back-end web developer with a different kind of coding expertise might suggest a different web host with a better content delivery network that minimizes the physical distance between users and the server that's responding when they try to access the site. Another example, a UI professional who specializes in design of interface controls might want to use a cache control header so that response time is faster after a user's first visit to a page. And finally, a UX professional who specializes in the broader experience of users might suggest a focus on the landing page because that's where users are bouncing from the site. While it's possible for a single individual to think from all these different perspectives, it's more likely that especially enterprises, I mean larger companies, rely on a team of individuals who play different roles to create websites. To explore any one of these tasks or roles in more detail, check out the many courses available for each kind of role on LinkedIn Learning. When designing a website from a graphic design standpoint, you have to be careful to use only graphic elements that are not copyrighted. You'll find a list of terrific royalty-free resources for designing a website at websitehostingrating.com. Their site includes multiple resources for all of the categories shown on this slide. They also provide comparative reviews of website hosting options for those using the WordPress.org software. The link is found in the sources on the instructional materials page for Module 7 on Canvas. Now that you have a somewhat better idea of what web design is, Let's examine the use of content management systems or CMSs for creating websites in part two of the lecture. A CMS allows multiple contributors to create, edit, and publish content on the web. It's common to note that the first content management systems were actually libraries and their card catalogs. Each card contained information about a piece of content, a book, article, photo, or whatever. In the 1990s, when content was being loaded onto the World Wide Web, people needed something like the card catalog to manage it. The first CMS software was custom created by computer companies for their own use or for other enterprises. For example, IBM created FileNet and a couple of entrepreneurs created Fatwire, which was later acquired by Oracle. By the 2000s, open source CMSs like Drupal, 
and WordPress.org appeared, and were capable of running both the back-end and front-end technology of a website, able to separate content from design. We fast forward to 2020, and CMSs offer both organizations and individuals the ability to publish content with minimal technology skills. On HubSpot, Anna Fitzgerald provided five reasons why people and companies choose to use a CMS. The first is definitely what I just said. No knowledge of coding is required, but there are four additional reasons. The ease of working with others on a single site. Multiple people can easily be involved and they can be assigned different roles. Some can be content creators, others can be reviewers, still others administrators. The third reason, CMSs come with up-to-date features that can be easily added. For example, SEO or search engine optimization plugins or accessibility tools. Fourth, CMSs come with choices among pre-designed templates. There's no need to hire a designer. Finally, updating can be done easily and quickly. If you want to adopt a new design, it might take only a few minutes to change the look and feel of a large, complex website. As I told you in Module 1, I encourage you to use WordPress because it's the most commonly used CMS, specifically for publishing web content. But remember that CMSs have evolved to manage content in different ways. I showed you this table in Module 1. An enterprise content management system like SharePoint is certainly different from WordPress, a web content management system, or Flare, a component content management system. A TechCom Pro may need to use all three of these depending on the company they work for. In TECM 5191, you get some experience in both a CMS and a CCMS. But let's look at an ECMS for just a minute. SharePoint is widely used in enterprises and most often used to create intranets used by company employees, although it can also be used by those external to an organization. This example from Microsoft SharePoint Lookbook shows a site for the Human Resources Department of an organization. Visitors see something that looks very much like a website. SharePoint provides many options for designing the site. It has plugins, what are called web parts, like this one for adding profiles of people to the site. SharePoint's especially useful when you need to share many files or documents with other users. And of course, it's totally integrated with the office suite of programs. There are tech writing positions in large enterprises that specify knowledge of SharePoint. If you want to learn more about creating a site in SharePoint, there's a great course on LinkedIn Learning. All right, in part three of the lecture, I'm going to revisit and expand upon some of the information about web publishing that I presented in module one. Your assigned reading from Module 7 from Tom Johnson makes it clear that TechCom pros have needed some competency in publishing content on the web for at least a decade now. Because CMSs are the means for managing web content, TECM 5191 ensures you have basic knowledge of a couple of them, as well as of HTML and CSS. You've already developed some knowledge of designing a website in a CCMS through your use of Madcap Flare when you were designing a knowledge-based site in the single source project. Let's look quickly at what it means to design a website in WordPress. Here we are viewing themes in the .com version. As you'll learn in the LinkedIn Learning course, themes are the way you control the look and layout of your site. You'll see the name of your current or default theme at the top of the screen. You can filter the themes you see in several different ways. Unless you purchase the premium WordPress version, make sure that you search for free theme so you're not disappointed when you finally find the one you want, but you have to pay for it. There's a list of features you can choose when you're searching for a theme. You can filter by screen layout. For your web portfolio, you're required to use a responsive theme. All of the current or most current WordPress themes are probably going to be responsive, but you want to make sure that your site looks acceptable regardless of the user's device. In addition to layout, you can filter by things like the number of text columns or the placement of a sidebar. You can filter by subject 
And one of the options is Portfolio. So now I'm going to switch to my blog, which is a premium WordPress site. Note, I'm using a different theme than on the free site. You see the same list of themes, however, but I can now choose a premium theme without paying for it. In the WordPress.com tutorial, you'll learn about customizing your site with things like menus or with widgets that do things like show your Twitter feed. Here we are in the .org version. You can still select from many, 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 many themes, so you don't have to code them by hand. Again, you can search by filters, like layout or subject, but you'll have total control even with a theme because you have near total responsibility for your site on the .org version of WordPress. Before I close this lecture, you should know that WordPress is rarely used for publishing technical content like documentation. I doubt anyone's using the .com version for that purpose. I have heard a few people use the .org version, but it has several important limitations laid out very nicely in a 2016 post on I'd Rather Be Writing. If you're curious, I've provided a link to that source in the instructional material for Module 7. In 2020, one technical documentation consultant in Germany listed more than 40 different CMSs one of which was Madcap Flare, all of which are used to create and publish technical documentation. The bottom line, while WordPress might not be the software you'll use in your first tech comm job, it's a fantastic way to publish your professional portfolio, and it will signal you know something about web design in a CMS. Let me summarize the main points of the lecture. First, I noted that web design is a somewhat archaic term because enterprise websites are no longer created by a single person. Instead, there are different roles with a focus on one or two aspects of a website, from front and back end web developers with a focus on coding, design, or data delivery, to user interface and user experience professionals with a focus on user controls or their overall experience. Second, I expanded on my earlier description of CMSs with a little history and a reminder that many types of CMSs are used in industry. I gave you a brief look at the use of SharePoint as an example of an enterprise content management system. Finally, I explored the role of web design in CMSs for tech comm pros. I reminded you that you've already done some web design in a CCMS in the single source project. And I noted that designing a site in WordPress can be done quite simply in either the .com or .org versions. I ended by noting that WordPress is rarely used for publishing technical documentation, but still represents a professional choice for a web portfolio. So you should be ready to tackle the WordPress tutorial on LinkedIn Learning now. You should be ready to finalize your web portfolio, start putting content in there, designing the site. Please reach out if you have questions. I'll be glad to schedule a meeting with you if that would be helpful. Have a great week.